Welcome back. In this video, we'll be studying the naming and the writing of chemical formulas of binary ionic compounds with Roman numerals. In the periodic table, most binary compounds are neither in group 1 or 2. That is, this compound do not have a common charge. They are variable charges. Most of them are transition metals. Examples include the copper with a charge of either plus one or two we have the ion which has charges of plus two and plus three we also have lead pb and thin sn which also have charges of plus two and plus four yeah so to identify their charges in a compound they need to be specified that is why we identify them with roman numerals in compounds now, for the sake of this video, we'll be elaborating on the Roman numeral so that you can know what they are or write them down so that they can help you in whatever we do here. Now, the Roman numerals. One is represented with I, 2, I, I, 3, I, 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 4, I, V, 5, V. We also have from 6 to 10, we have 6, V, I, 7, V, I, I, 8, V I I I nine I X and that of ten X. Yeah. Now notice this. There's one thing you need to know in this video. You need to know about oxidation numbers. Now, if you want to know about oxidation numbers, this channel has made a video of oxidation number, and the link has been dropped down below the description. So you can check if you want more explanation for, on oxidation numbers. Again, there's another thing you need to know. You need to know more about the periodic table. You need to have a periodic table before you because you're using it a lot over here. Yes, a periodic table indeed. So if you want more explanation on the periodic table, we did that in a particular video. I also have the description down below. So you can check the description for that particular video. All right, so let's do something. So naming binary compounds type 2. We have three rules displayed here. The very first rule states that you should write the name of the metal cation, followed by the oxidation number of the metal cation in Roman numerals, next to it, that is next to the metal. Now the final one is that we shorten the name of the non-metal and add the suffix IDE. The shortened form of the non-metal is usually taken from the root name. We have a video that gives examples of common non-metallic roots. So we wouldn't repeat that over here. And that video has been dropped below the description. You can cross-check that video for more explanations. So let's move on. We have this compound here, FeCl3. So following the rules, we name the metal first, which is iron. Now the oxidation number of iron must be calculated for before we can write it over there. So calculating the oxidation number of iron, we add the respective elements in a compound. That is, we add Fe to three atoms of Cl over here. And the final charge must be zero because the compound is a neutral compound. Now, don't forget this. Cl is a group 17 element, so it has a charge of negative one. So substituting this into our equation, we end up getting something like this. Further simplifying, we get a charge of ion to be plus three. And that is the oxidation number of ion in this compound. So three in Roman numerals is I, I, I. So we attach that to the ion over here. Now the shorting form of the non-metal over here, chlorine, is chlor. So adding a suffix IDE to it, it becomes chloride, chloride. So, so simple, the compound now becomes ion I, I, I chloride. And that is the name of this compound. Let's try more. Let's take CuCl2. So, the metal is named first. The metal is copper. So, we name the metal first. Calculate for the oxidation number of the metal. We add the Cu to the two atoms of Cl. And the charge again must be what? Zero. Don't forget CL as a charge of negative one. 
So we substitute that into our equation. And we'll further simplify and get the charge of Cu to be plus 2. Now that is the oxidation number of copper. So 2 in Roman numerals is ii. So we write it next to the copper like this. Now the shortened form of the non-metal chlorine is chlor. So adding the suffix ide becomes chloride. Chloride. And that is the name of the compound. Copper ii chloride. Let's do more examples. Pause the video without pushing play and see if you can provide the names of this ionic compound. So the very first one, Cu2O. I believe you got it right. So let's see if you're on the right track. So the metal is named first, copper. The oxidation number of the metal is calculated. So two atoms of copper plus a single atom of oxygen. The total oxidation number or the total charge on this compound must be zero. It's a neutral compound. Not forgetting the charge of oxygen is negative two, negative 16 elements. So substituting this, we get our equation to be this. So we further simplify. And here we can divide by two. So divide by two over here. We end up getting the charge of Cu to be plus one. Now, 1 in Roman numerals is I. So, we write it next to the copper like this. Now, the shortened form of the non-metal over here is ox. So, adding a suffix IDE becomes what? Oxide. Oxide. So, our compound becomes what? Copper I oxide. Great. Now, let's move to the next compound. CrO3. 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 Now, the metal again is named first. The metal is chromium. So we name chromium first. We calculate for the oxidation of chromium by adding the chromium atoms to so three atoms of oxygen and the charge again must be zero. So not forgetting the charge of oxygen, which is negative two, we substitute that into our equation and we get this. Further simplifying, Chromium becomes what? Plus 6. Chromium becomes plus 6. So, we write plus 6 or 6 in Roman numerals, which is VI. So, we write it next to the chromium, which is VI. Now, oxygen has a certain form of, that's the root name of ox, and a suffix ID is added to that, and we get what? oxide so our compound becomes chromium vi oxide so interesting now the final one is pbs pbs now we name the metal first which is pb that is lead the non-metal second but before we can name the non-metal we need to get the oxidation number of lead so you calculate for lead by adding the respective elements lead to sulfur and again the charge must be zero so not forgetting the charge of sulfur as negative two we substitute the negative two into our equation and we get the charge for lead to be plus two now two in roman numerals is i i so i i write it next to lead like this I, I. Great. Now, the shortened form of the root name of sulfur is sulf. So, other than the suffix ide to it, it becomes what? Sulfide. So, we add it like this generally to it. So, our compound now becomes what? Lead I, I, sulfide. So, simple. Now, let's move to the writing of the formulas of binary compounds. Again, we have three laws. Now, the very first law is that we should write the metal first, followed by the non-metal. Right after that, we write the charge of each ion. Then finally, we cause the charges to become subscript on the opposite ion. Now, let's work with the formulas or the, the, the rules over here. So, let's take this compound. And the compound has a nice name. 
we have lead IV sulfide. Lead IV sulfide. So the metal is named first. The metal over here is lead. So PB followed by the non-metal. And the non-metal here is sulfide. Now sulfide was taken from sulfur. So we have S. Now we indicate the charge of each of them. Now sulfur has a charge of negative 2, a group 16 element. Now pause and look at this. What would be the charge of PB? Now the charge of PB is taken from the Roman numeral. Most of the times students confuse this and they are normally like the charge or the oxidation number that is the Roman numeral is equivalent to the number of atoms present. But that is not the case. The Roman numeral is never equal to the number of atoms. Note that. So here, the charge of lead, as you can see, is plus 4. So crossing this, we end up getting a compound that looks like this. PB2S4. Now we can simplify this compound further by getting something that looks like this. So how, how do we simplify further? By dividing by 2, obviously. So it becomes something like this. Divide by 2. So finally our compound becomes this. PBS2. So interesting. Let's try more. We have this compound. Nickel III oxide. So the metal is named first nickel. Followed by a non-metal oxygen. Oxygen has a charge of negative 2. So indicated here. And the charge of nickel is taken from the Roman numeral III. III is 3. So we have plus 3. Crossing them. We get what? Ni2O3. Interesting. So let's do more examples. Pause the video without pushing play and see if you can ace this once. Great. So let's cross check our answers. We name the metal first. Let's take the compound lead IV nitride first. So we name the metal first. The metal over here is lead. So PB. The non-metal nitride is from nitrogen. So N over here. Now the charge of nitrogen is negative 3. And again, lead plus 4. Taking from the Roman numeral IV. Crossing them. We get something that looks like this. PB3 and 4. PB3 and 4. Let's move to the second compound. Nickel II bromide. The metal is named first. So nickel. Bromide from bromine. So Br. And bromine has a charge of negative 1. And that of nickel plus 2. Because the Roman number over there is what? II. Crossing them. We get something that looks like this. NIBR2. So simple. Now, I want to show you a trick on how to find the oxidation numbers of metals in compounds like this very fast so that I don't do a lot of calculation. So it's good you've watched the end. And here is the trick. So I have to use a nice formula, and here you are. The formula is CNSNSM. I believe you are wondering what is CN, what is SN, what is SM. Yes, I would demonstrate them over here. CN is the charge of the non-metal, where SN is the subscript of the non-metal. Finally, SM, can you guess what it is? SM is, yes, you are right. It's the subscript of the metal. So what do you do with this? You just multiply the charge of the non-metal with the subscript of the non-metal and divide it by the subscript of the metal. So let's do something with this. So divide it by the subscript of the metal. Yeah. So let's do something with it. Let's take this compound, FeCl3. Now, the charge of the non-metal Cl is negative 1. So, you multiply this with the subscript. And the subscript is what? 3. 
and we divide that by the subscript of the metal. Now you can't see any subscript close to the metal. Anytime you can't see any subscript close to the metal, it is one. So we divide by one. Now, your answer is always the absolute value of the formula. So when we simplify this, we end up getting negative three. By taking the absolute value of this, we end up getting a three. Let's try last one. This time around, we take Fe2O3. Now, you realize that oxygen has a charge of negative two, so that's the charge of the non metal over here. And a subscript of what? Three. So that's the the subscript of the non metal. So you multiply them and we divide by the subscript of the metal. Now, the metal is a subscript of two, obviously. So crossing them out, we get a negative three, but we take the absolute value of it. So it becomes what? It becomes three. And that is it. So simple. So you can try more examples with this particular formula and you can ease a lot of them. Congratulations on completing your tax on binary ionic compounds type two. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.